Welcome, Prowl Nation. It's lunchtime Detroit Lions talk brought to you by Lions Nation Unite. Herman Moore, 84. Holy cow, we got a good show for you today. Uh, we're going to talk about Dan Campbell and how this team is actually performing rather than what the uh, national view is. But first, before I get to all those things and the other subjects we're going to cover today, let's kick it to my main man, the man of steel himself, Kurt Steele. What up, now? Welcome to the show, people. You know who we are. We are Detroit Lions on the Prowl, your home. Detroit Lions news and rumors, and we're on that march of 10,000. So get on the bus, Gus. Get on this train, Wayne, and subscribe to the channel. If you're viewing us and you haven't done so already, what you waiting for? So go ahead and click that subscribe button. And like my man Jim likes me to tell you, it's free. It's free, free. If you need more free, it's free 99 and 53 cents. But before we get into the <laughs> show, you know I got to bring him in. He is the coolest man in the crew. The ladies love him. Mr. L. L. Cool Torrance. What's up, my guy? Good morning, good morning, good morning, Proud Nation. What's up, everybody? Hey, let's get this thing started. Right now. Let go. Detroit Lions talk, baby. We're going to get up, and on the way up, we're going to buy the kneecap off. Yes, sir. We in the deep. Hey, welcome back to the show, everybody. Really appreciate each and every one of you watching. And we're going to talk about, do you, uh, the topic is Dan Campbell. And this team performs better than we actually think it does. Kurt, what do you got on this? All right, so it's taking notice in the national media. And, and not just, it's, it's coming from the, the press conference on, on, a, on Sunday where you see the passion that Dan Campbell has for this team. And... Ryan Clark just said it this morning on ESPN uh, late last night. He was like, Lions, you got your coach. This guy's going to go to bat for you. He's got the passion. He's got the love. He is there for you as a team. And you think about that. We haven't had that. The narrative for Dan Campbell was he's a goofball. He's this, he's that. But they've noticed that Tony Dungy, mm -hmm. and then you look at the comments mm -hmm. this weekend on social media after the press conference, local media, national media, fans i mean everyone was like how can you not root for this guy and right. he has this team playing well they're understaffed they're undermanned you look at this team they're playing a whole bunch of rookies and backups and uh all kind of mess on this injuries all over the place and they're performing there was we i picked him to be a 14 point blood on sunday and it came down to a field goal and, he, and that was when ryan clark yeah. said he put Ryan. Uh, he said mike zimmer got a kicker to win against the Lions, he said, but don't fret. You guys are going to win, and you guys are going to win under Dan Campbell because he's your coach, and he's going to perform. Uh, he's going to help you perform well. But he's get those guys motivated. They go out and play hard. You think about the games that we've been in this year. We were tight. We were closest with San Francisco. We were Baltimore. I mean, that dang, we should have won. Um, mm -hmm. A few things, and we're two and three, or three and two. Yeah. I mean, really. I mean, look at this. These guys are playing well, undermanned, understaffed, or just inex inexperienced. So Dan Campbell has this team playing well. It's just so heartbreaking with those couple of losses, especially to Baltimore and to, and to Minnesota. And it just happened to be we lost on 250-yard plus and a record 66-yard doink field goal. But those guys play well uh, uh, hard under Dan Campbell. You know, we have some mistakes, but they play hard for Dan, and they play hard for this coaching staff, and I love – the direction this team's going in. It may not be perfect right now, but the Lions are coming. Watch your back. Them kneecaps is going to be suspect for you, boy. <laughs> but you got Jim. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to kick it to L.O. because we always take every single topic and then we kind of leave him with nothing. So we'll go to L.O. No. first. I'll go to mean the last. <laughs> no, we all good. I, I want to say that part first, but, I, man, I love it. I love it. That's If y'all remember, that's – what I really wanted to see outside of the 10, maybe 11, maybe nine wins that I was saying in the beginning, the big thing that I really wanted to see was just play hard. You know what I'm saying? Just go out there, play hard nose, try to win. You know, it, we've been in every single game. It wasn't a game that we couldn't have won this year. And that's really what I want. I don't want them to go on 17. So it's not good enough for me, you know, yet, but what I wanted to see, I already saw it. Like, I, I wanted to see this team not look like they did the last however many years. And to me, they, they're they not. They, they're playing much harder than we've seen in a long time. I just take it like this. the This team is the second youngest team in the NFL. 
and they have so many injuries, especially to the offensive line. The next player up thing is actually working for Detroit. I mean, Jerry Jacobs, you know, in, in this last game, they they have all kinds of undrafted free agents, rookies, people that probably wouldn't start for other teams, but yet we have a hard, hard schedule, I think. And we went out of that schedule. zero and five right now, but like, like LL was saying, we're, we're in every game. We lost two games on a, on a last second field goal. And I also had us getting blown out in Minnesota. Didn't happen. Um, the defense is not great at all, but they seem to perform well under Dan Campbell. And I wanted to make this point because everybody's all on him for being emotional and all this and all this other stuff. I think it just shows his heart. And I think it does. I think he is the coach to bring us to a, a at least – at least a conference championship, but maybe a Super if, Bowl. I do. I believe that. Game, baby. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, let's let's do it. Let's get it at four field too. Let's let's go ahead. Yeah, and let's get that home game and have it have it at home. But like you said, but so under under man, like inexperienced. You got guys who like said, shouldn't even be start. Like Adam Thielen, with Jerry Jacobs had two catches for four. Now they happened to be on the, those last couple of that last drive, mm -hmm. but two, and that was when they were playing prevent. But two catches for 40 yeah. yards that whole game. Jerry Jacobs stuck with Adam Thielen the whole game. I mean, he had a drop, but uh, hit him in the chest. But, hey, I can't say yeah. nothing about that. What can you say about Jerry Jacobs? He, Adam Thielen was a was a non-factor in that game until that, until that last drive when they were playing previous defense. And Dan Campbell's yeah. learning from his mistakes. When he makes a mistake, the next week he's trying to clean it up. He's trying to be better. He talked mm -hmm. about communication this week. He said, you know what? He said, I think what we're, our terminology is too long and all these new people, they don't, you know, they don't know. And it takes too long for them to communicate because of the, the, the phrasing of the terminology is too long. He says, we got to shorten that up to give them a better chance. I'm like, he's looking at everything he can do to help, to help this team win. And I, I really do believe that we perform much better under, could you imagine what this team right now, as it's constructed, would look like under Matt Patricia? Oof. Oh my God! Man, same record, be, same record, maybe. Man, well, we same gonna, record, but I think we, we, we would get eight pummeled under, in every game. I in really five do. games, we'll be on eight, and we yeah. play. We only play five games, we'll be on eight already. <laughs> I just, I just say this. I just say this. Um, shout out to those in the media that are that I recognize. You know, usually I I don't have anything against him personally, but I hate Dan Orlovsky. And, you know, it's usually him who, who championed in the Lions and Matt Stafford. So it's like, ain't nobody going to listen to you because don't nobody like you either. Just because, I, you know, I guess that that's his character that he plays at ESPN. But it's been it's been uh, Swagoo. It's been, like you just said, Ryan Clark, Tony Dungy, St even Stephen A. Like, and, but, he you know, he'll throw a shot or two. But it's – Oh, yeah. The, pe the people that a lot of people respect and have a – you know, that are – look at it as having being very knowledgeable in football is recognizing that this team is playing super hard. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Hey, man, you know what you guys do. If you like this video, like it, share it, comment. Let's get this thing to more Lions fans just like yourself. Help us with this YouTube algorithm. And, you know, we got to get you on this ride with us. The March of 10,000 is on, so click that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And, you know, we have a sponsor that helps us out with our manly bits. So go over to manscaped.com and use the code DLOTP and get 20% off your order and free shipping worldwide. All right. So, Jim, what's your family discussion topic for today? My family discussion topic is, do you think that the Detroit Lions perform well under Dan Campbell? And I, I guess what I mean by that is, you know, I know we're losing and I know, we, you know, we aren't winning games, but do you think that the team is responding well under Dan Campbell? Uh, that's just put that in the comments below. And we really appreciate that. Um, now I'm going to go to my news and rumors topic today. And I've got some reasons why this rebuild could be different than others. I, this is an article uh, posted. Uh, so, but I'm taking my own take on it instead. So here, here's the thing. Number one, we didn't overpay players in free agency. We didn't go get the B players and pay them a money. We got, $19 million a year. Right. We got the one year contracts that were like, Hey, if they don't work out bye. you know, it doesn't matter. 
Hey, hit the bus, Gus. Like Kurt said it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I mean, I think that's different. The draft for me was different. I think all of these guys that we drafted are going to be contributors in this game. Now, I haven't seen Jamar Jefferson yet, and I know that, but he's a seventh round pick. All of our picks stuck on the team, and most of them are contributing. You know, I mean, where are they at? They're rookies. <laughs> right. But Panay mm-hmm. Sewell looks like he's going to be a left tackle for years and years to come. He will move over to right per Dan Campbell when mm-hmm. Taylor Decker comes back. But look at this team. I mean, you know what I'm saying? That That is different than what we've had before, in my opinion, mm-hmm. because we would always fail on second round picks. We'd fail on, you know, all, <laughs> We just would. We, we'd pick some idiotic pick, like a long snapper or something. And I just can't get over the Jimmy Landis pick. I'm sorry about that, guys. But that's <laughs> why that give me a couple. That's a couple of reasons why this is yeah. different. The other one is this rebuild could be different because we have a, a solid group, almost like almost like a corporate setup. It's not okay. It's just Brad Holmes. And we've discussed all this right? It's not just Brad Holmes. It, it's, it's Ray Agnew. It's, you know, um, the other guy that I can't remember his name, John Dorsey, John Dorsey. <laughs> right. But on an offensive and defensive side of the ball, you have checks and balances. You have really good former players and stuff like this. And I think this coaching staff, as it matures will, and, uh, and the front office, as it all matures and, and grows together, Chris Spielman is a, is a big part too. If they all come together and grow together, I think this is going to be something special. And those are the reasons why I think that this rebuild could be a bit different than the others. Yeah, definitely. I'm looking at that. I feel you. I understand it. Um, and then just with the cleaning the cap space out, where we, we, we're just not holding on to players just for no apparent reason. If they had to go, they got to go. We'll deal with the cap space. Uh, the dead cap money will come off the books next year, and we'll have a boatload of money and a boatload of draft picks uh, to go ahead and get this thing right. So that's my biggest takeaway is it's going to be the Disneynomics. You know what I'm saying? Disneynomic works for you. 1-800-Disneynomics.com. <laughs> go ahead and get their salary cap right. But that's my thing. You're going to have a boatload of money and a boatload of picks to get this thing right going forward. Um, I'm, I'm leaning heavy on um on the front office, man. I, I remember, you know, I, when they were looking for whoever they were looking for, you know, I had the guys who I wanted in, in place or who I would like to have seen here. And Brad Holmes wasn't one of them. But once I started reading up on them and stuff like that, one thing I, I, I said a few times on here, I, I like the Ravens, right? I like how they build. I like a lot of things about their team. But they, they compared Brad Holmes to a young Ozzie Newsom. Mm. And I see it's a good comparison. It's like, you know, and uh, not to, you know, go on a, a small tangent, but like I didn't really care about uh, Luca Doncic when he was coming out until I heard somebody who I, you know, I guess respect compare him to Brandon Roy. I don't know if you guys remember Brandon Roy, but I really like Brandon Roy is a really good player. So it's just one of those. It's like, I don't really know much about Brad Holmes, but if y'all saying that, I'll wait and see. And it's all, it's, to me, the team from last year and this year already looks night and day. So we got to give credit to those guys right there. And then, of course, the coaching staff. But shout out to Brad Holmes, man, and uh, and Dan Campbell and everybody else over there. And the architect of all of this is who? The little lady. She looked for him because she is changing <laughs> the culture in Detroit. We may not see it right away, but it's coming. And the way she's got this team structured and the organization as a, as a whole looks different than we've had in uh, plenty of times. It's this is not her daddy's lions or her mama's lions. This is her lions, and she putting her own stamp on it. Yeah, and if if you like the video, subscribe and uh, and like it. Give it a thumbs up. I'm going to let you know something. I'll let you know a little secret. By the end of the week, we should be having new shirts in the Detroit Lions on the Prowl shop. I have the kneecap fighter shirt on, and and uh, Kurt's rocking a Hakamania shirt. Logan from um, Lions. Uh, what's their there we thing. are Lions Nations podcast. We are Lions Nations podcast. You know, I get that messed up with Kermit Moore's thing. That's why yeah. I had to do that. <laughs> but um, yeah, he's rocking the Hakamania shirt. And I'm going to show you that picture here. So yeah, there's just so many good things going on. And, and there's going to be a couple of new ones. Uh, a, a new, there's going to be new stuff. And I won't tell you what it is yet, but we got some new stuff coming for you. Yeah, definitely. And if you wear it and you send us a picture of it, we'll post it on the show. And we're going to post it on our social media definitely as well. You know, it's time for your man, Kurt, 
to get into his news and rumors topic. And I got a, I got a, I got a phrase for you. Help is on the way, dear. Help is on the way. <laughs> yeah. we'll get some players back soon. Yeah, Looks there like we, go. we have um, Taylor Decker is trending, and so is Tyrell Williams is trending towards being back available for week six. Uh, excuse me, yeah, week six versus the Bengals. And also, you look at maybe getting the defensive tackle. Kevin Strong might be coming back here soon yeah. as well. Yeah, he's he some is guys. Back. Yeah, so you got some guys. We're looking at it. Dan Campbell said we, they got the trending up. So we're looking at Taylor Decker, you know, sliding back into his left tackle spot. Panay Sewell moving over to his natural right tackle spot as he was in training camp because that's what we drafted him to be a right tackle. Don't let nobody fool you. We know that he's a good left <laughs> tackle, but when Brad Holmes said we drafted him to play right tackle, so that's what he's going to be until yep. exactly. Decker moves on. So you got those individuals coming back, and it helps that just especially Williams coming back with Cephas going down. So that definitely is going to help yeah. with the wide receiving court. You're going to bring back a proven veteran, and he I think he has the trust of Jared Goff. So you look at that, and that definitely gives us more down the field uh, targets. And you got a big body. William, Williams is a big body guy. Um, Williams uh, mm -hmm. and uh, Cephas has a big body, but he's kind of shorter. So, yeah. but you have a tall, big body guy in Williams, and he can fly. So, you know, help is on the way. So, uh, like my man, what's his name, Country Wayne, say, help is on the way. So, hopefully, we're going to get some help and. I just think that this improves the outlook for me for the season going forward. And I think that that five to seven wins can come to fruition once we get healthy and get these guys back into the fold. Absolutely. We're paying, we're playing teams tight right now with all the injuries we have the offensive yeah. line. Uh, give Evan Brown some credit. My goodness. I mean, Ragnar yeah. is a top three, five, one center. I mean, in the league mm -hmm. and this guy came in and, and he, he's doing an admirable job. Is he Frank rag now? No, he's not, but, we're still getting running lanes. We're still doing well in, in, you know, in pass pro for the most part. I know that Sewell had his problems, but yeah, we're, we're doing pretty good. Yeah. And we, and we get help and we get some help. Wow. Should be much better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, help is on the way. I want to say, I'm glad that my thinking was wrong about Terrell Williams. Cause just how they, any, any headline or any article that I saw, they were calling it a brain injury. You know, I understand that a concussion is a brain injury, but usually they say concussion. And they were saying brain injuries. I'm like, man, I, you know, I just hope he'd mm -hmm. be okay. Like, you know, forget all this yeah. football stuff. I just hope that yeah. he can, you know, be all right. But if he can come back, you know, if he's okay and can come back and play football, man, come on. You know, we, we need you, of course. But, you know, let's uh, come Like you said, help us on the way, man. We need we need everything that we, that we can you know that we have here. But yeah. um, that's just the biggest thing. I'm just so glad that, you know, that he's actually able to come back and actually play this year. Yeah, definitely. And then, the, the you know, and that's going to help with the maturation of the other players, the younger players we have on our team as well. You get some veterans in, mm -hmm. get them on the field, and it helps with the younger players uh, getting them and getting those guys some more targets because they're going to draw some coverage away from the younger guys. We bring in the veterans in. He's going to draw a tighter coverage than Amara Ross St. Brown. That may open him up to some more catches. You know, I like seeing a number 14 because, you know, that's what I rock too. I rock number 14. So <laughs> like the video, comment on the video, share the video. And we need you to definitely go over to Detroit Lions on the prod.com and check out our content. We got more coverage of the Detroit Lions right over there and check it out. And like Jim says, while you're there, click the link for Lions on the prod shop.com. We got some new products coming out over there. But give some articles a read over there. Matthew Ferguson is so talented. A writer i'm going to put some content over there too so it's going to be more and more content for you to check out on detroit lines on the prowl.com and you know click the like button and subscribe to the channel you know we've been talking about that it's free you know what i'm saying like you put you keep your wallet in your pocket for this one just click the button all right my man ll cool tones you know what i'm saying holla at your boy tell me what you got for your news and rumors topic for today um on this tuesday my news and rumors topic uh comes from uh, pride of Detroit.com and the headline says five takeaways from the Lions lost to the Vikings. Um, I'm going to go over theirs and then, you know, I want to get a takeaway from you guys as well. Um, their first one, they said that uh, playing is safe didn't work. Um, you know, they referenced that um, early in the year we were super aggressive on fourth down and we took a big step or noticeable step back against the Vikings and didn't have a bigger outcome on the end of the game. Um, uh, the next one is Aline McNeil is turning into a legit nose tackle. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, he ain't he ain't so dominant yet. And uh, I, I agree with you on that, Jim. We, we, we share the same thinking on that. But 
he out there. Like he he's out there. I I might I might change my candidate to a knee biter to from from Anzarike to him. I think he's gonna be the first one that, to actually bite somebody. He don't. don't <laughs> <laughs> but um, but my pick is Derek one, Barnes on that one. <laughs> Hey, hey, that's not a bad pick. Um, but uh, the next one, and this one, this one is a bit concerning to me. But hopefully, we 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 see a change in this one soon. But um, their next point is T.J. Hawkinson is missing. Um, yeah, I know, I know. Not, I don't want to put him on this in the same boat as Austin Bryant. Like you know, he said he was on the on a, on a milk can or milk carton. But so far this year, he ain't been. You know, he hasn't been the, what I thought he was going to be. The uh, the next one that they have here is Tracy Walker has quietly be or is quietly having a great season. Um, I'm not so sure on great yeah, season, I but agree about that, I don't but think he, I don't think he's having a I don't think he's having a bad season. I think that you know coaching is showing maybe you know on on uh, on Tracy Walker and um, the last one that the last point that they have here and I thought about this on Sunday. Um, the Trinity Benson trade hasn't yielded any reward. Yeah, he, we haven't really seen him on the field, and when he gets looked, we drop him. So I don't really. Yeah, I, I thought know, they but, gave up too much for that guy anyway. I right. Really did. I, yeah, but um, now so those were um their five takeaways from the game on uh on Sunday against the Vikings. I want to ask you guys what what's one takeaway uh, that you had? Uh, I have to agree with them on the Tracy Walker thing. He had the he's one of the top rated players in PFF. I think he was one of the top rated yeah. safeties in the league on Sunday. Not just on the Lions, he was. I mean, he wasn't one of the top players on the Lions. He was one of the top rated defensive players. I think the safeties in the league on Sunday. That guy was bringing the wood. I think he's, yeah, he I think he just I think to to me I think what RB Pleasant when I, his instructions were to those guys today uh, on Sunday was just go out and play. Play your game. And if he if Tricky Walker plays his game and they put him in the right position, that guy is a talented guy. And like you said, he may be better f- suited to fit as a box safety because he, he can lay the wood. I mean, you look at his size. I mean, Tracy Walker is a pretty big individual, so he can get in there and and, and lay some wood. So um, I like where he's going. I like that he's trending upwards in his play. So yeah. I just think that he, we need to get him a partner on the back end that's going to help his play. Who yeah. can go back there and <laughs> roam around and make some big plays, bang the back end of the secondary. And I think, you know, maybe – you know, maybe Dean Waller, maybe that guy in short term, but we need some guy, a guy back there to roam and, and make some coverage plays. Maybe shift Robbie Price back to safety. I don't know. But uh, right now, we're just shorthanding the secondary, and we don't have a lot of options on that back end to yeah. help him out right now. One of the takeaways I have from this game is I thought we were going to get blown out. And the offense kept shooting itself in the foot and shooting itself in the foot and shooting itself in the foot, but that <laughs> defense kept kept them out of the end zone for the, for the whole game. So mm-hmm. one play. And I, I know I I'm thinking, well, you know what, if we don't keep shooting ourselves in the foot, getting stupid penalties and, and I don't blame the refs on this game whatsoever. I'm just saying, if we don't get dumb penalties and, and just, un, yeah. just not timely mistakes, you know, interceptions, mm-hmm. fumbles uh, at the, like the 30, we not only win this game, we win this game by a lot. I mean, we have to look at it like, oh, man, we lost a got heartbreaking last second field goal. But if we correct those mistakes in the red zone, this could be a team that could beat a lot of teams. It sounds weird, but the defense played well enough for us to win. I, I was upset with the offense this week. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've got big tests coming up this, you know, this Sunday. And yeah, we do. Coming in. Um, they've played a lot better. Their offensive line has played a lot better than you know most people would, they thought they would have. They've kept Joe Burrow upright and everything like that. But I think we can we can uh, if we can get him off of his platform, uh, we yeah. can we can be competitive in this game on Sunday. I'm not counting the Lions out on Sunday versus the Bengals at nope. all, not no whatsoever. But I like the uh, uh, you know I'm a Tracy Walker fan, so that when you said that and about him. You know, I, I like 21. Uh, you know, I like his background. I like that he's, you know, I've, I've liked him ever since he's come to Detroit. You know, I just think that he needs to – he has that raw tools, but I think he can put it together and have a good season going. I forward. hope so. I just don't think the guy yeah. can cover that well. That's yeah, my issue. I, like he's I said, a really good <laughs> run defense. <laughs> safety. But he can't cover to save his life. 
Yeah, but if we use them right, like we said, if we use them yeah. in the box, like they did use them on Sunday. Yeah, but you can't okay. have two of those guys. You can't have nah, two that's guys saying, you can't good. cover. Yeah, he needs some help on the back end. So we mm-hmm. need to get a we need mm-hmm. to get a, 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 a think about how good how good he could be if we still had Quandre Diggs back there on the oh, back end. Wow. Okay. But they do on. play a two, they do play a you know, one side, uh other side safety setup. Yeah. So they don't they, necessarily play a box and a and a and a, mm-hmm. and a coverage guy. So I don't know. And maybe it's scheme. Maybe uh, I don't know. But I, I just don't I don't think any of those guys in, in the back end are really covering all that well. That's that's oh, the hard part. I, the I, I, I agree yeah. with you 100 percent on that one. OK. Yeah. All right. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, guess what? I think it's time to have you subscribe to the channel. <laughs> like the video and share the video. Help us on the March to 10,000. This is a, a very real thing. And I really, really appreciate each and every one of you that are tuning in. And if you're tuning in over and over again, we hit the subscribe button because you know how much that costs. Kurt tells us every single time. How much does that cost, Kurt? And man, it's free. It's free, free. If you need more free, it's free ninety nine. And if you need more free, it's fifty free cent. So <laughs> there you go. It is always free, free, free. It is. Okay, so we've talked enough. So let's go over to the comment card. Zip our lip and let's see uh, what you had to say, Chuck. Forget. Yeah, it's a cool name, man. This team plays very hard, and looking at their injuries and their talent pool. They have been giving it their all. Yeah, that's what this show was really kind of about. With the Detroit Lions are playing really hard for Dan Campbell. And who wouldn't? That guy is 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 authentic. He's his authentic self. And and he just wants to win. You can see it. You just see how much he wants to win. Yeah. Right, Kurt? Yeah. Oh, no, I got it. I got it. Oh, um, you do got it. Okay. Ed, yeah. Ed Huffmaster says, old line, uh, same old Lions, just a nicer, more likable coach. I thought even even this bad team could win three games this year, but I was counting on beating Chicago and Minnesota. Now it looks like 0-17 record, which would which would really be something to be proud of when you figured they would break their old NFL record of 0-16. No other team can say that. So hold your heads up, high fellas. Or <laughs> hold your head up, head up high fellow Lions fans. Uh, shout out to uh, to Ed Huffmaster, but no, nah, man, we're not going with 17. And just if I could say this real quick, if you uh, shout out to everybody that leaves comments, I usually go and read them and like them and sometimes comment back. So if you haven't seen WTM and TV, that's me. So shout out to everybody that's commenting, man. I thank y'all. Yeah, uh, I don't agree with that 100% at all, but okay. Oh. I mean, you have your opinion. Okay, RV Jackpot. Man, that's a crazy name. <laughs> okay, I know we are not, uh, we're one where we want to be but i like the effort and he is not giving up and they're not giving up so i get what you're saying that's what we're talking about they play hard they don't give up they fight tooth and nail to the end and we haven't seen that out of the mm-hmm. out of the lions in a long time even with the underman under talented team that we have right now harpondo harpondo snatch a.k.a. Brent, <laughs> says, hey, family, don't get disappointed yet. It'll take about three more years. I've been saying that from the beginning. We have too many holes to fill right now. And I want to comment. I want to say one thing on that. If we have too many holes to fill, why are we? anybody would want to trade any of our guys like Taylor Decker and all this other stuff? Why do you want to do that when we have so many holes to fill on this team? Nah. This team does it all the time. I hope they don't continue. Nah, you, you look, I don't think Brad Holmes is that type of guy. And I don't want to hear that from a lot from a Giants fans talk about trading people. Worry about your own people who over there get hurt <laughs> and playing Dallas. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. Um, Chris Amwick or Amick says, I do feel the skeleton Lions roster we see now is a better squad than the Vikings. I can see the Lions beat the Vikings in Detroit this season. I agree with half of that. I agree that we're going to beat them in, in Detroit this year, but I'm not so sure we got a better roster. But no, thank you for that, Chris Amick. All right. Be ready. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Be ready. Athletics. K Ninja says, uh, yeah, defense look better this week. Walker was my standout guy. Mine as well. Uh, he had <laughs> at least one nasty hit in every quarter. Uh, wanted to one of the W, but very proud of this, this team. I, I was proud of the effort too. Uh, mm-hmm. I know that had to be gut wrenching, like, to see those players and, and someone said it like they lost the Super Bowl. That's how distraught that they were on the field on Sunday when after that after that field goal, you see them leaning and, and, and the whole bunch of 
players, I, I ain't gonna lie to you. I was bent over like, oh, <laughs> but you know what? The effort is there and they're going to keep fighting. They're going to keep fighting for Dan Campbell. I totally agree with that. 100% that they're going to fight for Dan Campbell. They're going to fight for their own pride too. I mean, this team's a proud team. That's the you thing. can see that. Mm -hmm. Yep, you yeah, you can definitely. see that. So we heard what you had to say. Now we're going to go to my favorite part of the show, brought to you by Delightful Bites. It is the dessert with my man, Kurt. Hey, dessert with your man, Kurt, brought to you by Delightful Bites. It's football season, baby, so go get your football special. A dozen cookies, you get four helmets, four logos, and four footballs for $35. Nice, big size cookies. They bake fresh, ship fresh. You know, you get them. You pop them in the microwave for a few seconds and they're nice and tasty and warm and they're sugary sweet and they're so good. So go over to delightfulbites.com and do what? Get your cookie on. We have mm -hmm. some birthday shout outs over the past few days that you know we were missed say that we didn't have. That's what we got today. So they can go and get themselves some delightful bites over there and celebrate their birthday. Uh, Chris Spillman had a birthday uh, recently. Yes. You know, the big. Reliance Legends is helping out our guy Derek Barnes and the rookie finally can have a legal cocktail. Mr. Penesel turned 21 over the weekend. Uh, shout out to him and happy birthday to those uh, those individuals. Uh, it is so good to bring some positivity with that. Uh, and if you're getting older, that means you're just getting better. Hopefully that those things can transfer for Chris Billman, because he can be a better uh, admin person for the Lions and for Nate Sewell, who can mold into the one of the best players in the league like he was drafted and his potential is uh, right here for the Detroit Lions. So that's my dessert with your man, Kurt, brought to you by Delightful Bites. You know, if you like how they look, you'll love how they taste. Delightful Bites, get your cookie on. All right, final thoughts for today. I just want to I, I just want to say that you guys don't lose hope. Uh, I know people are turning on Dan Campbell and they're turning on the team and Dan Campbell's in over his head and he should be fired and all this stuff. But if you look at this roster and you look at uh, what he has to deal with and, and what these coaches have to do to coach up these, these young fellas, it's, it's a difficult task. It's not like this is easy for them or anything. Mm -hmm. So that's what I wanted to say about the, about the lions. We do have tomorrow. We have our gold members meeting. It's at 3 PM tomorrow. And we will uh, have a zoom chat and sit around and chat and talk about the lions and all kinds of different subjects, whatever you want to talk about. And it gives you a chance to meet us and, uh, and you know, get in with us a little closer and stuff like that. We get to know you, you get to know us. It's really kind of cool. So yeah, that's tomorrow on, uh, on at 3 PM Eastern. Eastern Standard Time for those people on the West Coast. Yep, yep. Um, my final thoughts for this uh, Taco Tuesday, Two Piece Tuesday. Um, I remiss from yesterday. Uh, one of the ball out, ball sub players I wanted to shout out yesterday was uh, Foxy Man. Oh, he, he yeah. Was punting, he was punting that thing, man. So you know, <laughs> really sucks. We got shot a punter, but you know, great job. Um, all, as always, have a great day. Be kind. Um, it's coming, man. Sooner than you think. It's coming, man. The Lions are going to be wherever you think they, they should be. Hey, sure. definitely. All right, so my final thoughts for today is the Lions are going to be uh, one of those teams that's going to compete all year. It's not going to be what we want this year, but just got to look forward uh, to the future, and I, I believe in this team going forward. I think Dan Campbell's the man that's going to lead us there, and I'm liking all the positivity that he's getting right now in the national and local media uh, for how this team is is really competing under him. So I like what we're doing. So shout out, shout out to MCDC. You know what I'm saying? Keep doing your thing, my fella. All right, now it's time to do what? We got to take that stroll, baby. We got to walk over to the Wall of Fame to see who's on there today. And uh, for our uh, bronze members, we have Detroit Drew. You know who he is, DSA member with that young baby. We have yes, Midwest Lions, <laughs> Latino <laughs> Leo. We have Brian Stover, Bo Gagrius, Justin. Let's crack one open, 10K. We have Jays <laughs> Roberts, <laughs> Subs, he Trap City Boys Entertainment. We have Crystal Wiley, Bubba Bo, John Kepler, R. Allen, the Flintstone himself, yabba dabba do. We got Jim <laughs> G is in the building. We got David Anderson, and you know him. He knows everything because who he is, he's the everything king. Rounds out mm -hmm. our bronze members. Silver members, we have 
Gnomus J. What up, Gnome? What's going on, my dude? Jason Porter's Cap Ice Code. I see you over there in Live Station Unite. We have the bat signals in the sky. Well, who? The Batman of the 313. And hopefully he can come help us save the day. John Martin. Definitely we have Mr. Scotty the Bear, the Frenchie. You know, <laughs> that gets and all that good stuff. And we have Gold <laughs> For Gold members, we have Mr. Reliable himself, Michael Huck, just in the D, Pride 74, Doug Prince 72, the inspirational Turner C. Burley is in the building, Dominic Davis, Larry McQuiston, the F5, was in the gold memory <laughs> now. The tornado is blowing <laughs> through. We have Bob Korowski, Big Ferg himself, Matthew Ferguson. You, what up, Ferg? We have Randall Flag 606, Miles Gibbs, the Grid Iron Blitz. We have Mr. Rough and Raw himself, North End Ken. Stay safe on those road raids, my dude. Keep it safe out there on that trucking business. And we have, you know who he is, the doctor, Dr. Detroit. <laughs> It's always in. And to become a member of the Wall of Fame, click the Join Now button in the description or the Detroit Lions on the Proud logo at the bottom of the screen. And unfortunately, this one is definitely not free, but it'll cost you a little bit. Don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? A couple, 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 <laughs> couple pesos. But you can go ahead and get yourself on that Wall of Fame. Yeah, but it helps the show. And if you want to support the show, that is one way to do it. Or you could go over to Detroit Lion Shop or lionshop.com, whatever it is. <laughs> I'm Lions on the shop There we go. <laughs> you know me and my memory, you know, and, and yeah. uh, help us out there as well. Uh, Kurt, yeah. what do you what do you got for for uh, the end of the show today? OK, so this is one of my favorite quotes. I kind of this I don't know if this is a Kurt still special, um, but winds are coming. Right. And. It's going to reflect on this, the coaching staff and things of that nature. And it's about leadership, right? A leader's accomplishment, a leader is me not measured by their accomplishments, right? Their success is not measured by their own accomplishments. And that's what we had in the last regime. So it was all about, oh, I did this and I did, this, this, did that. But with Dan Campbell, here's a mantra for him. His success is not going to be measured on what he does. It's about what his players do. So your accomplishment as a leader is not measured by your accomplishment, but the accomplishments of those who you lead. So, and I think that's that's why Dan Campbell is so uh, passionate. He wants his players to win so much because it's not about him. It's about his players. And that is what we take away from his leadership as the head coach of the Detroit Lions. So, hey, make sure you go out, like the channel, subscribe like the videos it's always good for us to get this youtube algorithm going so we can get this more as content to more lions fans just like yourself if you haven't done so already go over to lions nation unite and join that app we're over there there goes mobby's over there dosa dion you might run into herman moore over there so go over and check it out it's the ultimate virtual hangout for detroit lions fans so go over there and check it out if you need some lions gear go to fanatics.com the link's in the description you can just have some lions gear you can help contribute to this show because a portion of the proceeds from that link go to help us grow this show this show excuse me and it's tuesday it's taco tuesday it's two-piece tuesday whatever tuesday whatever you're eating for lunch <laughs> you know what you got to do baby the napkin crumbs off your face finish your drink and get back to work and whatever you do in life you know what you got to do for your boy kurt still you got to boss up Fall out and be the best version of you that you can be. For my fellas, LL and Jim, this is Kurt Steele, and we will holler at you real soon.